some writers, reporters and journalists in particular, writing about cryonics treat it as if it is some kind of alternative to burial or cremation, some exotic form of interment. That is completely wrong, completely misses the point of cryonics. Cryonics is simply an extension of critical care medicine. Medicine today has certain limits and capabilities. Let's go back about 50 years to get some perspective. Let's say you were walking down the street and somebody in front of you just suddenly fell over and you went up to them and they'd stop breathing. Back then, what would have happened is someone would have come and leaned over them, checked their breathing and their heartbeat, and they'd say, this person's dead. Today, in the same situation, medics are gonna arrive on the scene, unless there's somebody already on the scene with some training, and they're gonna immediately do things like CPR, defibrillation, administer calcium channel blocker drugs, and a variety of other things that, in many cases, will actually bring that person back to life. So, we have to ask, 50 years ago, when someone leaned over the person and said, she's dead, were they correct? Well, not in any final sense. So step forward to today. Today we do the same kind of thing. Doctors do a lot more these days. They can pull back people from a lot further uh, down the path of deterioration. But still at some point they're gonna say, this person's dead, or I declare this person clinically dead. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that all the cells in the body have died. It doesn't mean that the person has really gone away. It simply means they've stopped functioning to a point at which today's doctors and medicine, today's techniques and technologies, can't do much for them. That doesn't mean they couldn't do something for them. In many cases, actually, they could revive the person, they could resuscitate them temporarily, but they don't do so because it would be pointless. They'd be miserable and they would die again a few minutes or a few hours later. So there isn't a sharp line here. Recoverability changes over time. So today's critical care medicine is much more advanced than that of 50 years ago. It's not unreasonable to think that the critical care medicine of 50 years or 100 years from now will be much more advanced than today's. That people who today apparently have succumbed to a fatal condition are actually retrievable. The problem is, how do we take someone with today's technology and get them to the future where more advanced technology exists that could revive them? And that is the rationale of cryonics. With today's medicine, if you have a severe medical problem in a place where it can't be treated, you're put in an ambulance, moved across space to another place where they have the technology and the tools to fix your problem. Cryonix does something sort of similar except through time. We stop things getting worse by our various procedures, freezing you in place and take you into the future one day at a time. So you can wait 50 years, 100 years, and you'll be in essentially the same condition as when you were first cryopreserved. But now, far more advanced technology will be available to treat the heart disease, the cancer, the infectious disease, the aging process, whatever it was that killed you. Killed you here being really only in that temporary sense, the sense in which you can potentially still be revived. So that's what cryonics is, that's how it relates to medicine. It's really an extension of critical care medicine. And how does it work? Well, the basic steps of a cryonics process, our way of doing critical care medicine, when it's very critical, are like this. It starts off usually with a standby, which is just what it sounds like. We send out a team wherever you are, if we know you're critically ill, if you're terminal, and we stand by, we wait at your bedside. The next step is stabilization. When a person has been declared clinically dead, legally dead, which is what is necessary before we can begin our procedures, given the current laws, that's when the stabilization process begins. We immediately start external cooling of the patient, putting them in an ice bath, circulating icy water around them to drop body temperature as quickly as possible towards but not below the freezing point. We administer a series of, at least at Alcor, 16 different medications which have a range of effects including stabilizing membranes, uh, neutralizing acidity, a whole range of effects supporting blood pressure, heparin to keep the blood flowing and at the same time uh, we undergo cardiopulmonary support. We restore circulation, we restore breathing supported externally using various devices. So basically within seconds of the person being declared clinically dead, we're restarting everything. We're getting things going again. So almost all the cells in the body are alive. It's just they don't know how to function together very effectively at that point. So we're immediately slowing down metabolism with this cooling, protecting the cells against various forms of damage with this chemical cocktail. Then we will transport the patient, which may involve, if they're um, in another state from where Alcor is based here in Scottsdale, Arizona, may involve plane travel. If it's a more local case, we'll bring them on our emergency vehicle back to our main facility. And at that point, to simplify the process, we will 
remove the patient's blood, let's say it's a local case where we haven't done a remote procedure, because there will be a remote operation in that case to remove the body fluids and the blood and replace them at that point with a transport solution. But in a local case, we'll bring them directly to Alcor and then the goal is to remove as much fluid, as much water from the body as possible, because everybody knows water freezes, and freezing is not good for cells. It's going to damage the cell membranes. So we replace as much of that fluid, uh, intracellular fluid, blood, as possible with a cryoprotectant. You can think of a cryoprotectant simply as a medical grade antifreeze. And it's something that we've been working on for quite a few years, refining formulations to minimize toxicity while maximizing the protective effect on the cells. So over a period of several hours, we've replaced those fluids and we can then at that point finally drop the patient below the freezing point of water and continue cooling as rapidly as we can. Those initial degrees are crucially important. Obviously the warmer a biological system is, the faster metabolism is running. And when that metabolism is, uh, is deranged, when it's deteriorating, you want to slow that down as much as possible. So we'll drop temperature as fast as we can to around minus 110 degrees C, which is pretty chilly at that point. At that point, the body undergoes a phase transition. It starts turning into a true solid and really all metabolic activity ceases. At that point, we slow down the cooling process to about one degree C per hour to avoid fracturing, which can happen in a large biological system as you cool at that temperature. And so it takes another couple of days before we reach the final temperature of minus 196 degrees C. That's minus 320 Fahrenheit. At that temperature, as I said earlier, you could wait for decades or a century and you'll be in pretty much exactly the same condition as when you started. So that's the rationale. Cryonics really is an extension of critical care medicine. And I think doctors and nurses and other medical staff are beginning to understand that a lot better than they did in the past. I think the evidence for that is the cooperation we've seen with hospitals that's greatly improved since the earlier days. Quite often now, doctors, chief of staff will say, help these guys out if they want help, otherwise stay out of their way. They'll recognize what we're doing. They recognize some of the procedures from uh, harvesting of organs. Uh, they've seen low temperatures used in surgery. Many parts of our procedures are actually very familiar to the medical profession. So cryonics is not some kind of exotic form of internment. It's simply an extension of critical care medicine. The idea is to give this person another chance with the more powerful technologies of the future. For more information, please visit www.alcor.org.